Um, is the format not the same as we just did? But I'll say, hello, welcome to Talking About. We're going to talk about Doctor Who Christmas. And then James can say that he's the little boy that Santa Claus forgot. Yeah. Ooh. Jason can say, well, in my day, I had a, I had a, a, a sad soma and a piece of coal, and I was very pleased to have it too. It was from the <laughs> local mine. It was full of maggots. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Christmas and welcome to a festive talking about special. It's true. Every word of it's true. Um, um, yes, like, subscribe, do all of this stuff. I'm sure it'd be worth your time. Um, I'm Paul Orpibo and I am joined by... Hello, it's James. <laughs> Hello, it's Jason. <laughs> He forgot his name then. Ho, ho, ho! Yeah, that's closer to the mark. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, it's Ben. Hey! Both. So we are going to be talking. I can't hear with this. It's like a... Well, that's bad. No, anyway. I, I don't need to hear if Jason's talking. Um... <laughs> Oh, that's rude. No, no, we should be kind to each other at Christmas. Right. It, is, it is kind of not to listen to you. I'm being kind to myself. It's self care. <laughs> oh, days. See, we are talking about best of Doctor Who, not like Christmas special. I suppose we could. We're talking about the magic that you find underneath your tree. I mean, I, do you know, you know, when you you expand the the talent pool and the responses shrink. <laughs> this, this. <laughs> so, J Jason, I mean, yes. Doctor Who, you Doctor Who was started when you were about twenty, but did you ever have Christmas gifts relating to Doctor Who? Yes, I did have Christmas gifts relating to Doctor Who over the years. I've had quite a few Christmases because when you're a Doctor Who fan, it's quite easy for people to buy you presents because they know the one thing that you like. I mean, let's face it, we've all had plethoras of annuals across the years and, and all those sort of various bits. Although I have said, actually, probably I, I would probably have gone out and bought the annuals myself rather than waited for people to gift those. Um I've got on the back here, actually, that one of the very first Christmas presents that I would have been given um, back in the day. Um, what day is that? <clears throat> Jason, you, you do know that TIE Fighters are Star Wars? No, 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 not the TIE Fighter. Look, 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 look. Look at this little beauty. Look. Ooh. My, my, Jason, what a big box you've got. And do you know what? This as a this as a child was my most wanted gift that I wanted for Christmas was a proper Dennis Fisher TARDIS and also got some of the figures as well. I don't have any of these anymore, actually, I have to say. And this isn't the original that I bought back in or was bought for me for Christmas back in the day. But this, I think, of recollection is possibly the very first Christmas present I can remember getting as a Doctor Who fan. Fan and little boy back in the day. What happened to your TARDIS then? Um, I think you don't understand the worth of these things. I mean, if I could go back in time and buy a complete set of all these things, I think I would probably have treated my toys with a little bit more respect back in the day, I feel. Nah, it's Bunk, and is it because I've got um, a mum and dad's? I've got my Thundercats, I've got my He Man, I've got the Star Wars, they're all in the loft. I didn't want to treat them with respect, I wanted to play with them. That's what they were there for, and that's possibly what I did. And um, but you know, I had the Tom Baker um figure, you know, and you lose the scarf and you lose the hat, and the tie comes off, and eventually the waistcoat's gone. And, and to be honest with you, you just don't look after these things. I never had the only one I didn't have in the set, actually, I had a giant robot. And I also had uh, the canine 
and the Dalek as well with the red with the red dome on it. But I never had a Leela, and I don't think I've ever quite got over that. Leela with her big ass hair. She got <laughs> some big hair, and she the Leela doll. Ah, it was out here. It was massive. But um, yeah, I think you know there were there weren't, I suppose, back in the seventies as much choice as I think our our um, some of our modern audiences possibly have enjoyed over these years um, gone by. Um, but to be honest, you know what? This literally was the, the only thing I wanted as a child was the TARDIS. And it was amazing because you used to turn it round and he'd disappear and then he'd come back again. And it was magic, wasn't it? So why didn't you have a Leela? What was, what, what was the situation with not having a Leela? Let's have some therapy here. No, I just don't <laughs> think I was ever bought Leela. I, I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, they were only about £3.75 each, weren't they? Or something ridiculous back in the day. But I honestly, because they were bought as presents for me, because my pocket money as a as a young, poor young child, never, never stretched to buying all these things for myself. Um, and I've just never got around to recollecting Leela either. The system went, went when I was a wee me, having an older brother meant that my older brother would always have all the good guys. I was like the bad guys and the girls. That was the, <laughs> that was the setup. So I had evil then, I had um, April from the turtles. So I could have bad guys and girls. So I think maybe it's, it's sometimes it's, it's your siblings that push these things. How does she ra though? I cut her hair into a fashionable bob so that she could fight more easily. Um, it's true. It's actually true. Uh, ben, we well, see. So see, there's an elephant in the room here that we're slightly avoiding here. But Ben, what? No, it's yeah. true. Okay, we won't avoid. We'll come to Ben in a moment. I was about to come to Ben, but no, no. What we will say is that James is the little boy that Father Christmas forgot and has never been bought a present for Christmas ever. It's not ever. But I did never not... had a present. He just sits no, there no, with a tree with nothing underneath it, crying and going, "What is Christmas? Why flashing, are you so sad?" Yeah. Flashing knobs there. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, because when we were talking about this, I never received a Doctor Who related gift in my childhood. It was never. It. It. I mean. I was very much, uh, you know, Transformers, things like that, and Star Wars. And my, my bless him, my dad still buys me Star Wars stuff. Um, but it's, it's, it's one of those things where I never got um, anything Doctor Who related when I, was, when I was younger. The first piece of Doctor Who um, toys that I, I got, I bought myself with my Christmas money. So that's, that's what I, where I'm going today. So... I bought my my Daypole TARDIS, just the just the you know just the, the the just the outside bit. I do have the big kit which I bought drunkenly on eBay and spent quite a bit of money on. But uh, this was my this is my sort of first Doctor Who toy, uh, and this I bought when I was at university, and. There was a shop which was um, it was like a toy shop, but it 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 was up in Manchester, and it had all sort of stuff that had been basically the the, the pole um, factory like burnt down or something had happened to it. So they had like all of this sort of like reduced stock because it was damaged. So this one didn't actually have a box, um, and I got a free Sylvester McCoy because I bought it because it was because it was damaged. So I got a free one of these nice. thrown in with it. Nice. Um, and it used to work. It used to, the, the flashing lights at the top used to work. Uh, however, over many, many years of it being moved around with me and played with, um, the light has actually stopped. So I did. So I do now have another one of these which the light oh bright light, bright flashy light do you have um, a five-sided console then i have got the five-sided console where the console goes up and down and it lights up um with the green canine 
and it's got Mel and it's got the doctor and then it's got the and that's what I wanted when I when I was a kid that's after I bought this because you can you can it sort of opens up into a sort of a bigger play set but I never had the bit that went in the middle of it to 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 do the play set so um so that was that was my my first toy and that was the replacement because it had been played with so much it, it no longer works uh, but I do still have the packaging for that so it's a, so I do have I do have the the console which is which is beautiful um and some of the other figures so I've got yeah, tech trap the other McCoy and his dark brown master there's a whole load of these but these are sort of i bought afterwards um but yeah so that was mine did they ever do a quark in the range no they didn't although they do have um i've got somewhere there's like a purpley sparkled garlic so um which i bought quite recently it was just like um and i've got the sea devil as well but there's there's still in the packaging so i've not not opened those my tiles had a blue light mm. yeah the the one this one is blue this one is not weirdly it's 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 a blue um bulb but it doesn't actually flash up blue whereas this one did when it when it worked i don't know if the yeah, I was going to say I don't know whether that um, it is kind of your very not... own time ram there, James. I could, I could. But yeah, there we go. Hey, was... you did. You did have things for Christmas. Everyone has a Doctor Who gift at some point for Christmas. I've had to, like as an adult. Well, that was part. That was part of the remit. Did you not read the <laughs> message? <laughs> It was like ever. It wasn't like when you were six. But I have got to that point where people go, well, I didn't buy you anything Doctor Who related because we thought you might already have it. So that's... Oh, that's just that's just an easy excuse, though, and it happens all the time, doesn't it? I mean, imagine you could end up with two copies of the Season 2 Blu-ray set in your house, couldn't you? I mean, who'd do that? Who'd do that? I don't know who would do that. I think you'd have to do it yourself and maybe order it twice for yourself because you're a bit crazy. I mean, maybe that's how that would happen. And then if only you didn't have a whole group of friends that already bought the box set, otherwise you could have gifted it for Christmas. If only you had friend, a friend you could gift it to for Christmas. Yes, some of us unfortunately did. <laughs> do exactly that. So I like the fact that that was not open, so it could be anything in the box it, set. It's like no, clearly that, clearly that is, clearly that is what it is. Yes, it is. That could be a memory card if it's Amazon. There is no trusting their packaging. <laughs> or there's no trusting your your senility. It could be a ser like a series oh. two box set, couldn't it? That's rude. No, I literally, because Amazon have been rubbish with the deliveries on the season two box, I had to make sure I got a box because they're already sold out and I would be paying sky high money otherwise. Has it sold out? Apparently it has sold out, yes. Is this Elon Musk news? No, it's probably me making it up as usual. Oh. Well, when, when you start talking next, I'll have a look on my phone and check. Um. Ben, I'm I'm too scared to come to you because you you keep moving. <laughs> uh, I'm 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 afraid my battery is is going very low, so I've had to move rooms. So I, I hope it'll it'll be charging up now. Um, ben, in the colonies, did they ever have gifts for Doctor Who? Yeah, well, that's that's the thing. I grew up in Australia, so um, so our Christmases were either spent you know, mostly spent outside or on the beach or things like that, but of course, we didn't have as much uh, Doctor Who related stuff as everyone else did. Well, as as you would have got here. So um, I think the main thing I remember um, getting for when when I was younger was this. 
a celebration. Ooh, very, very, very nice. nice. It was, and I, I, I love that. And I love sort of, you know, devouring it and going through the pages and, you know, seeing what was what. And and um, the other one I, I can't find at the moment, I think I've got a copy somewhere either, was the, um, the anniversary, the Radio Times anniversary magazine, which came out and they had all these photographs of all these people that I'd, I'd I had no idea because because at the time obviously um in Australia we used to get lots of repeats of like John Pertwee, Tom Baker which is what I sort of grew up with um but I hadn't at one point I had no idea that we had sort of um anyone before then and that there were you know people in black and white and and all these other companions so I was reading through this magazine thinking who are these people I've never heard of them and I don't know who some of these monsters were and it was like it was really eye-opening and I, I love that magazine yeah I, I, that was that was well thumbed that was um but as for anything else I think um novelizations probably um used to you know pop into town and and scour the bookshops for the various novels that used to come out um the VHSs as well mm. um because obviously we used to get the um we used to get slightly different ones as well as as regards to i think we got some of the vhs's which were slightly different to what you got or maybe we got them a little bit earlier or something other I, I seem to remember that for a, a couple of them um but yeah yeah um, i mean you know we got a lot of um really good i don't think we got any um specific stuff to australia like we'd never got you know like some sort of like uh, uh, tom baker in in his in budgie smugglers for example <laughs> picture you know and, uh, like on or on the beach peter those and laying on the beach sort of thing like like an australian sort of themed doctor who type thing i could be wrong but i don't I, i'm not convinced that those toys were ever made available in the uk ben <laughs> <laughs> unofficial merchandise it was. i'm not sure they were that official either <laughs> Because there's, there's always lots of references about the ABC shop having a big Doctor Who merchandise line. Yeah, there is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we used to go, um, me and my brother used to uh, go to the ABC shop and that's that's where we would find a lot of our stuff. Because um, the ABC, if people don't know, are the, are the people who transmitted Doctor Who um, all throughout um, its time. And um, yeah, yeah, that, that was that was basically our go-to place there was a couple of like sci-fi type little bookstores and little shops we used to have and they used to get in unusual bits and pieces because we wouldn't get a lot of the regular merchandise that you would get here so yeah so it was interesting trying to find some of the stuff um along the way but yeah yeah it was it was it was a different sort of christmas growing up targets were an easy option for everyone to buy us though weren't they mm. as, as christmas presents um I'm I'm sure Peabal would be would be waving a hardback or two around at some stage here to say he had one or two of those for Christmas. John, I'm I'm thinking whether I, I can remember. Um, I mean, you know, the perils of being a child. I can remember that there was a second head bookshop near to us, and he used to purposely get a pile in each week, and he said, "Do you need any of these?" And I'd pick through the ones I'd got or not got, and um, a couple of times he got hardbacks in. And it was the thing of, uh, as, as a wee me, I mean, I'd have been about 11, something like that, 10, 11. It was a case of, you could have a stack of hard paperbacks like that, which were a pound each. Targets were a pound each in those days, kids. Wow. Um, or you could have a hardback, and the hardbacks would be about 10 to 15 pounds. And it'd be like, I could have, I could have 15 paperbacks for the price of one hardback. So I remember he got a pile of hardbacks in once, um, and he's like, are you interested in any of them? And I was like, oh, that, I, I kind of not really. But there was one that I did have from his pile that, that magical day, which was Doctor Who and the Cave Monsters, which was £12. £12. Mint condition, not ex library, that hardback was. <laughs> but £12? Seriously? £12. And little me went, do you know what? I will, I will have that hardback. Not, not thinking, you know... I'll be able to buy a house with that in 2022, just just because I must have just liked it. To be honest, you're not far off it. The prices they're going for on eBay at the moment. But the oh, the book that I have, I've, I've got, I've got props. Everybody, oh, it's right. not just Julian Glover's book that I've got here to wave at you. It's 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 actual books relating to this. 
my my big Christmas. I became a Doctor Who fan ninety two. So not aged ninety two in nineteen ninety two. Um, so the first Christmas, I think, had a few VHSs and stuff like that. And all but the Christmas of 93 was just off the back of the anniversary. So it was a bit kind of like magic, magic. And this is basically the equivalent of the celebration, isn't it? Ooh. Time frame, oh. which I know a lot of people at the time kind of went, it's not really very in depth. There was a bit of a kick on it, wasn't it? Because it, it's sort of just, it, it's, it's the artwork, isn't it? It's the, it's the target, target artwork and a bit of that. Um, so I had that, and that was for my secondhand book, man. You got that for us. Um, and they used to take it to conventions and get it signed. So I've got my 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 copy. This this is a, this is like a duplicate. My actual home copy one, my proper one, is from. It's a sort of little time capsule of when I used to get conventions in the sort of nineties. So it's all signed by you know Liz and John Perry and things like that. So it's, it's a little little time capsule. Um, but the other magical thing for Christmas ninety three. Ah, the shy. The, uh, the, the tins. I've got those. They're so sweet. Oh, especially if they haven't rusted between now and uh, then mm. and now, of course. Well, interesting. I've got I've got one, one one here that is a bit on the rusty side, and one that's not on the rusty side. Although the one I've got at home, I'm like I'm, I'm like some kind of merchandise warehouse here. One at home has gone particularly rusty. I think a lot of them have oxidized. Is that the term? Mm. Um, but the thrills of this was um, go. I've got the dump bin that they had at Woolworths. Woolworths had a, a Dalek dump bin that they displayed these in. That's mum and dad are so lucky. They've got all my crap He Man and Turtle toys. They've also got a Dalek dump bin in the loft. Um, <laughs> but you also got different different pictures. Oh, I didn't realize that. So, I mean, they weren't all pertinent to the boxes. I think that was the slight strange thing about it. In that it's it's lovely to have the Emperor Dalek on there, but what's it got to do with this and Dalek on Westminster Bridge and all that stuff? I think I had the Dalek on Westminster Bridge version at home. I can't swear to it, but were there about were there about six of them? Something like that? Different ones in the bottom? I think so, mm. yeah. Yeah, I think I think they went through the various early stories. Yeah. Whereas um on the bottom of my dog, this is this is this is a John Pertwee bottom. But the one I've got at home's got the one I had as a little me that's at home is um to Davison. It wouldn't be my choice now, but as a little me, he'd just been very nice to me, so he was my choice then. Um, again, it was a slightly strange thing because because Colin Baker's in it, so you sort of go Colin Baker one, he's in it. Anyone else? It was a bit random, but I got a Patrick Trout one for five pounds when they had a sale at WH Smith as well. So, which one did you have? I want to check now. Yeah. You don't know? Can't remember. I can't remember. They can't remember. I have to go up in the loft and have a look. I honestly can't remember it being on the bottom at all. So that's all new to me. This is this is like early days multi formatting, isn't it? Really, it's that kind of cruel thing of making a Doctor Who fan go. I haven't got the set if I've only got the third Doctor one. I need the first Doctor, the second Doctor, the third. So you'd end up buying the trial of a time or seven times over at forty quid a go. <laughs> <laughs> you have no money left to do anything else. <laughs> I couldn't afford a turkey that Christmas because basically you just bought the same VHS set over and over. But it was it was the thrill of having because I, I knew I was having it for Christmas and then opening on Christmas Day and then um, watching Mysterious Planet and wondering what was wrong with Nicholas Hare and why it all gone curly. Pat Troughton is on mine. <laughs> Oh, really? it's like the three doctors, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you, you, you clown. <laughs> well, that's Billy Hartnell with his reindeer hat. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One day I shall come back. Yes, I shall come back. Who's <laughs> 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 that when they're home? <laughs> Get him a big finish, Stat. He sounds nothing like him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this has all gone very wrong. Um, so yeah, I think I think uh, yeah, because now that was the that was the annoyance. Uh, James, give it a wave, James. Make a noise. Yeah, give it a wave. There we go. Yeah, and 
And as a young me, it annoyed me because all my Doctor Who VHSs were in video cases, like with a nice sleeve. Mm. Right? Yeah. Whereas Time of a Time Lord and The Chase and Remembrance came in those cardboard sleeves to fit in the box. And I was like, oh, I now can't take them out. And they kept, every time I took them out, that's a little plastic thing inside. Mm. Every time I took them out, they scuffed a bit more. So I took them out and put them in a different case in the end. First of all, problems. Doctor Who fans and packaging. That's a, that's a thesis that someone needs to write, isn't it? Mm. Speak, speaking of packaging, do you remember the, um, the Crusade um, set that was released in 99? It was like a great big box and you sort of open it up and it had like a, um, it was like a, a, it was a, a video, in one of them, and then it had a big space um, for a CD, which was the two missing episodes. And it had a little key ring as well. And postcards. That's right. And postcards. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Yeah. I, yeah. I seem to remember that the, the cover was, was it, was it William Hartnell and there's someone else on the, on the front of the cover with him? It was Chris. Who, who, who was it that was on the cover of the. Oh, do, you, do you know what, though? If there's a Christmas present ever needing to be bought for anyone, it's that book. <laughs> Well, oh, it's funny you should mention that, but that would make a fantastic Christmas gift, I think, for anyone who's a fan of Doctor Who, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, James Bond, Harry Potter, or just the British stage. It's a good mm. gift. Um, I did have that for Christmas, the, the box at the Crusade. I remember my grand getting me that, mm. fat fans. That was always quite a good thing, actually, a Doctor Who... VHS set was always a good Christmas gift. You could mm. sort of, because mm. they'd usually come out sort of October, November, wouldn't they? Because I remember having the East Space one. Mm. Yeah, with the the horrible swell packaging. Well. Yeah, the Ice Warriors yeah, one. The, was yeah, nice. the Ice Warriors one. That was that funny sort of shaped box that had like a sort of a flipped over, didn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah. And the, the, the sort of, you had a couple of quite decent. So you had the Cyberman one where it was 10th Planet and Attack of the Cyberman, which was good. And you had the Dalek one where it's Planet of the Daleks and Revelation of the Daleks. Good. And you had the Master one where it was Colony in Space and the Time Monster. It was like, oh, what has Christmas done to us this year? What's wrong? I have all three of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they were, they were nice tins, actually, weren't they? And you had the proper video inside. Hmm. They were yeah. really nicely designed, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose Much like I had these. I was going to say, I suppose these days it's all B&M sets being given out for Christmas, isn't it? s and M what? B&M! <laughs> Rude. Are, are you having a B&M set for Christmas, Jason Clifford? I'm not having a B&M set for Christmas, no. Oh. We'll club together and get you a Leela to play with. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, don't. Well, you don't want to unwrap 12 inches of Louise Jameson on Christmas Day. Ah, uh, that boat sailed years ago, love. <laughs> I don't think that boat ever came into harbour. <laughs> and the boat sank before they even made it. <laughs> that was Iceberg right ahead from the beginning, oh, I think. Oh, my days. The Titanic. Crikey. It's a lot to answer for. So... <sighs> Before anyone dies on us here, do, uh, has anyone got any Doctor Who gifts they're having for Christmas this year? Well, I wouldn't know because I'm not allowed to open them this side of yeah. Christmas. Yeah. You know, sometimes I, you can you can request it, gifts, Jason. Yeah. It's not necessarily like an X-ray vision looking through the paper situation. I like the element of surprise, though, at Christmas. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> well, I hope someone brings you a season two box set. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it's actually quite possible. Um, which is the worst thing. I could end up with three of them. <laughs> there, there is nothing worse than a surprise at Christmas. There's nothing worse than a surprise ever. I've had some terrible gifts for Christmas. My auntie bought me a terrible... I wasn't even a child, I was about 22. She bought me a pack of fim. Do you remember the thimbles? Yeah. She bought me a set of thimbles. I opened it on Christmas Day and I just looked. I thought, what? What the. I'm not. I, I, can, I, I can smile if I force myself, but I'm not great at hiding it if I think a gift's not very good. Yeah, it's always difficult, isn't it? Especially if you're at some family 
do on Christmas Day or whenever, and then you go around and they say, oh, here's what Auntie whatever's bought you, and you unwrap it, and it's like soap on a rope, <laughs> and you think, thank you, that's what I've always wanted. I've not had one of those for years. Oh, my days. Jason's rope's worn through. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, no, but you they were always disappointing presents to be had across the years, though, weren't there? Anything that comes with the words Lynx Africa. <laughs> <laughs> like... I never really used to get Lynx sets. I didn't get impulse ones just for the record, but I never really used to get Lynx sets. I'd have liked a Lynx set. I used to like the Lynx blue one. I no. Mm -hmm. I I, yeah. know. Yeah, that's a nice one. I mean, it's just that the, the Lynx Africa is like, teenage boys really isn't it it's just it no I'm just like <laughs> thank you so much well i mean if anyone is in the market for requesting christmas gifts this year <laughs> i would recommend what oh, okay. I... but That's will a it new book i've not seen that before <laughs> It probably won't arrive to, with current postal strike. It probably won't <laughs> arrive till mean. next July. But you'll know it's on its way like Father Christmas. Yeah, you could request it for Christmas 2023. Good idea. Or, and this is a gift that we'll keep giving, book a ticket to a phantom event. You get to meet one of us. Probably not all of us. There's a BFI on. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder whose that is that you wouldn't meet if there was a BFI on. Maybe a special guest? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I know, know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> you would meet um, us, actually. It's very true, though. You would meet us. And yeah, so just don't, don't be too friendly to Jason because he'll go home with you and it's all <gasps> Oh, like, no, that's very rude. <laughs> he's, like a, he's like a stray cat. You'd have to make sure that you locked your car first. <laughs> It just pops up in the back seat halfway home. <laughs> Hang on, have we gone into an X-rated Christmas special here? <laughs> like, oh, I know the services. I know the services. I need a break. It's <laughs> oh like God. one of those blow-up dolls in uh, Only Fools and Horses just pops up from behind the bar. It'd be the same picture and it'd be like, hee! <laughs> Good evening. Anyway, well, uh, let, let, let us know what Doctor Who treats you've had for Christmas down below. Tell us what you've had, what's been good, what's been bad, and whether you've ordered Julian Glover's book yet. Um, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Yes, indeed. A pleasure, as always, and a Merry Christmas to you all at home. Is that a cup of whey, Jason? It's not. It's a beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a sample. He's got Sarah Miles on us. What's he doing? I've needed a beer to get through this one. <laughs> Shout a bit of eggnog or something. Keep it festive. Anyway, Jed, God. Ben, do you want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Well, that was that was very succinct, wasn't it? Everybody at home, a little bit of the list now that anyway, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what that was. I don't know. I don't know her. Um have fun, like, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> that is not gonna be it. It can't possibly be. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>